<laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. Well, I've got my notifications set and I'm all ready to watch the court stream of the Bruce Lerman and Channel 10 case this afternoon. Now, remember, we're two days away from the judgment being delivered and Channel 10 are trying to get evidence admitted into the court. However, it's usually very challenging and judges don't like it. And in this case, the Harmon rule is going to apply. Now, this rule comes from the UK House of Lords decision in Harmon versus Secretary of State for the Home Department from 1983, which was later adopted in Australia by the High Court in a case called Hearn and Street. According to the majority of the High Court in Hearn, if one party is required by the court or rule of the court to disclose documents or information, the party receiving the disclosure cannot use it for any other purpose for, for the, other than the one for which it was given unless it is admitted into court, uh, into evidence with the court's permission. The Hearn Rule has three primary purposes. Firstly, to encourage full and frank disclosure of documents by parties, to protect the privacy and the compulsory nature of the court processes, and thirdly, to prevent abuse of court procedures for an ulterior motive. An ulterior motive is one that differs from the reason why one party is given access to another party's documents under a procedure designed to achieve justice. In practical terms, any information or documents obtained from affidavits, expert reports, orders for discovery or subpoenas should be treated as strictly confidential between the parties to the litigation, their lawyers, any litigation funders, witnesses, experts, and the court. An affidavit annexing or exhibiting the document or information is usually only read in open court during the final hearing of a matter. This rule not only applies to the courts, but to also many tribunals and arbitrators. It is often misunderstood by those who are not actively involved in litigation, who may believe that once a document is handed over, it can be used for any purpose. A breach of an undertaking to the court, even in an applied undertaking, has the force of the law as an injunction. Therefore, a party who breaches an undertaking risks being held in contempt of court. So what does the court consider when deciding whether to relieve a party from the undertaking? So whether it can be admitted or not. So this is what the court will, will determine. The most common path to avoid difficulties is to seek an order of the court to be released from the implied undertaking. If an application is brought, the court will consider matters including the nature of the document and information in the document. For example, how private and or confidential the contents of the documents are the circumstances under which the document came into existence, any prejudice the author of the document may suffer if the document is permitted to be used for another purpose, whether the document predated the litigation or was created for the purpose of litigation and hence was intended to eventually enter the public domain, how the document came into the hands of the party seeking leave to use the document, and the contribution of the document to achieving justice in the second proceedings.
In Springfield nominees, this was called perhaps the most important consideration of all. So to sum up this rule, the implied undertaking or Harmon rule is a potential minefield for all parties to litigation if they depart from a careful approach to keeping evidence and documents received from one another part from one from another party in the litigation strictly confidential until such time as the material becomes part of the public record at final hearing. In today's digital in today's digital environment, this also extends to ensuring the security of IT systems storing such device as is as strong as possible to prevent unauthorized access to the material. If a party wishes to use documents obtained in one set of proceedings in another, careful consideration should be given to how that can be achieved so not to run the risk of a contempt of court occurring. So part of today's arguments will be why or how these documents can be admitted. Now it would seem that there has these documents were used in a have now become part of the public domain. They have been leaked, they've been put into the media. So it's going to really make it very interesting as to how the court takes this these text these alleged text messages we don't know essentially what it is but um the fact that they have had other documents used from other proceedings may work in the favor of channel 10 it may not i don't know how the judge is going to feel about this again it would it would depend about what the contents is as to whether or not it is going to be allowed but I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I hope I've explained the Harmon rule a little bit more concisely. Um, and it's also, um, and considering that a lot of court documents are not released in the public domain in Australia, um, you know, there has to be a leak somewhere to, to have some of these documents out. So how do you find how do you find the leak but we'll sit and see but that this Harmon will is likely to be coming coming into play today and we'll see what happens i'll catch you later today bye for now